Uh, thank you, Joshua and Moby, for, for inviting me to this symposium. I really wish I was there uh, to get to see Francesco Finicio's exhibition and, and also to listen to the other participants. Um, I'm going to, uh, to share my screen so that you can um, see the images that I would like to show you. Um, can you see my screen now? It's thinking, it's thinking, yes. Yes? Okay. So, uh, as Joshua said, the, the title for this project, it's a uh, hashtag and the first letter of the phrase, just what is it that makes today's exhibition so different, so appealing. I started it about two years ago, and it consists in a multimedia installation and a series of bidimensional pieces. <laughs> Um, second, I, I borrow the title from Richard Hamilton's icon of pop art, Just What Is It That Makes Today's Home So Different, So Appealing, from 1956. In this collage, Hamilton managed to articulate an idealized scene of the consumerist post-war domestic space, composed entirely of images taken from the media. In my question, I substituted the words homes for exhibitions and turned the whole phrase into a hashtag abbreviation updating it to our research into the current massive circulation of images in the media and specifically addressed to contemporary art and exhibition making. Uh, so the idea for this project started whilst I was living in London. I was aiming to get some visibility for my work on group exhibitions through applying to several contests. The application guidelines for these contests, most of the time juried by curators, were often very narrow. One could only submit one image of each work, often paying the worth of a week of food shopping as a fee for each image. And the only information you could provide was the title and technical details of the work submitted. These conditions are limiting if your works, like mine, uh, rely on processes and require a bit of explanation in order to understand the image provided. The resulting installation views of my works are also not always very attractive. I realized this was a problem. I felt the pressure to make my work look more contemporary in order to make it fit into the system, to create pieces that produce better installation views. I started this project as a way of dealing with this feeling and trying to understand this phenomenon. At university, I was taught that was what we call contemporary art can take any form possible, but I had the impression that this was not true. According to the art that was being successful in different contexts in the international art scene, MA shows, artist residencies, commercial galleries, institutions, artist run spaces, websites, and art magazines, there seemed to be an unspoken consensus about what contemporary art and exhibitions look like. So, 2011 was the year in which the iPhone dramatically expanded in reach and market, including within the art world. The proliferation of smartphone and tablet for the first time provided consumers with the ability to view high resolution images online nearly anytime and anywhere. Although it was founded in 2008, the Agrator website Contemporary Art Daily became a primary storage site for images of contemporary art, with no coincidence around 2011. His founder, Forrest Nash, was included on the Art Review's Power 100 list as one of the most influential people in the art world of 2013. I asked myself, as many other artists and theoreticians, whether if this transformation of ways and speed of seeing art in the digital age was surpassing the function of informing what's going on in the art scene and having a direct impact in the production of art and exhibitions themselves. The frame from my research was the documentation of art and exhibitions on the internet. I wanted to look for art that represented both market and critical success. The sources I chose were aggregator type art, web art websites, such as Contemporary Art Daily or This Is Tomorrow, commercial galleries websites, social media pages, and the digital versions of art magazines such as Freeze or Moose. And I only traced back up until 2011. Before this time, I could see that the trends so popular of the, of the past five years were only incipient or non-existent. I browsed on these websites looking for formal similarities and identified these 21 categories, which would constitute a kind of canon of the contemporary international exhibition business. 
This includes motifs, objects, materials, forms of presentation. The categories I found are the ones that you read on the screen. Uh, I gathered in total around 2,500 images. In the case of some of these images, it's difficult to discern a solo from a group exhibition as the curatorial criteria from the curator of the gallery hosting the show so pressed. Some of the images of artworks or exhibitions I found even have more than one of the categories of the archive, and I have observed that there are certain combinations of objects and forms of presentation that appear more frequently, such as videos displayed on square TV monitors and fabrics casually displayed, folded or creased on the floor or hanging without a stretcher, or the combination of plants and wheels. Here we have example, some pictures a friend of mine sent me uh, of the popularity of Persian back last year edition of Artisimar referring to. Not all the work incorporated to the archive were made after 2011. There are also exhibitions presenting other works with the present. So I am as well interested which exhibitions are being restaged, like the case of When Attitudes Become Form. Uh, Fundación Prada during the Venice Biennale in 2013, certain artists recuperated as they relate so much to the current artwork and exhibition canon. This is the case, for example, of Marcel Brodaers, Jana Hilbridge, Marisa Merz, Jiri Kovanda, or John McCracken. Uh, I have to say I also included some images of my work in this archive. Um, as a footnote, uh, on this search, it was interesting to find that some months ago, one of the sponsors of Contemporary Art Daily was the London-based company, The Blog, which provides square TV monitors for hire to artists, curators, galleries, and museums staging video work. The archive of images was edited as a 40-minute video in the form of a slideshow, which I'm going to play now. Uh, structured into categories in which the images appear at one second pace, one after the other. This video was sent to 36 cultural agents, artists, independent curators, gallery directors, art historians, art critics, collectors, and institutions from 11 countries. I asked them 10 questions with the aim of finding their opinion about the alleged democratization in the use of digital technologies, who controls and influences these legitimation devices, and the role the various actors of the art system play in making this decision. Their most representative reactions were recorded with a text-to-speech software that uses digital process voices and edited it as a kind of incomplete conversation. I will now play a short uh, version of the audio. I have the feeling that the art world is being captivated by information industry. There seems to be some unconscious or subconscious coherence within the art world in choosing certain elements to be added to the artwork exhibition. Live experience of artworks and exhibitions has been replaced by the simple, greedy and fast information of what we think is happening in the world, but that we know only through filters. We see these as tools of information and knowledge, when they are only tools of those in power, of the hegemonic discourse. I guess this is the price to pay for the social success of contemporary art. Seeing without seeing, liking without liking, judging without judging. Nowadays, that's in art galleries than in my friends' houses. And I have two of them, Slavs and Tartars. Aladdin. There is no time to assimilate poetically what artworks intend to communicate. Art has been turned into an image that flashes and burns in a second. We are talking about objects and objects and about the objects themselves. The internet generates a certain aesthetic, but we mustn't forget that it's a distant aesthetic, an aesthetic of the image itself on the internet. A communication from a few to many, 
dominated by very influential people, media and organizations. I wouldn't call it an influence exerted by the internet and sites such as contemporary art daily. It's a monopoly, a fundamentalist discourse. It says a lot of our relationship to nature. The plants are often used as objects of mere decoration. It is almost always the same house plant that I guess does not cause a lot of trouble and requires very little care. Ephemeral art. I am not at all interested in that. Camille Henrich. Therese Wynne Evans. Adrian Villa Rojas. Marcel Broda. It is the dominant model. Unconnected. Apparently simple elements of uh, constructive processes. Created through propositional mechanism. Exhibit under a false elegance that leads us to the scenario of the museum space. The contemporary palace. More than a style that defines itself according to some concerns, I would call it a dictatorship in which decisions are imposed according to specific stereotype canons. Okay, so uh, uh, both the video and the, the sound, it's, uh, it's uh, online, so you can access it if you want. Um, so this is the image of the, the installation I, I, I created at first. Um, it consists of a spatial collage of objects and materials loosely representing the various categories. My idea was to create a perfectly contemporary installation that would represent the current artwork and exhibition canon and therefore would fulfill the criteria in order to experience success on the international art scene. An installation that would pass with required features. The objects are set in relation to the video showing the image collection, which is presented on a square TV monitor, and to the audio piece people could listen to using headphones. The overall arrangement, it's a flattering, it's flattering to create an almost two-dimensional image. And in this way, it's not, it not only reflects the perspective of digital image and information media, but also the cliche character of contemporary media and the trends they convey. The installation is now displayed at the Gallery in Taxi Palais in Innsbruck. In this case, most of the objects were not sent and they were reinterpreted by the curators of the show with objects available in the city, some of them belonging to the people working at the gallery. So this was one way of visualizing and interpreting the data I gathered. Um, at the same time of developing this installation, I worked on a series of 21 dimensional pieces, which I entitled They Are This or They May Be Others. These are interventions with acrylic paint onto photographs. Each of the elements representing each form and category were in this case isolated. I worked alongside an art photographer in order to create what could be standard documentation of the pieces of an international contemporary exhibition. The painted lettering represents the images at, as internet memes by using the full font impact with black outline. In these works, I focus on the cross from material to immaterial and vice versa, and the viral distribution and perception of these images smartphone screens. Uh, So, from some regards of the specific subjects I trace in my collection of images gives them significance on the one hand, but makes them also appear absurd, especially as they seem to be no reason for their trendiness or that media loop. However, the identified motifs, objects, and gestures could represent uh, mobility, for example, in the use of cardboard boxes of transport companies or the incorporation of wheels to hieratic objects the exhibition as the artist's studio, in things displayed casually, such as the canvases lo loosely hanging on the wall or the crisp elements on the floor, the exhibition as a context for commodification, for example, the stands with hanging elements, as in the retail environment, 
or the presence of domestic objects as a recreation of the future collector's house, a domesticated and decorative idea of nature in the use of plants, birds, to watch from rocks, precarity and economic crisis in the use of humble and easy to store materials, or globalization in general, as most of the categories are in a way connected with contemporary motifs, materials, structures that can be used and understood anywhere on the planet. Most of these formal trends have been directly or indirectly initiated by the avant-garde artists and theoreticians, 60s and 70s, and movements such as minimal art, conceptual art, institutional critique, or art de pauvre. I believe they have been transferred into a contemporary language and visual vocabulary suitable for a global audience of art professionals, including collectors and critics. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very, very much. Um, Thank you to you. Christina, and talk, uh, talk with Skype soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. -bye. Cheers. Bye.